good morning students today we are going to study applied thermodynamics practical the topic is cooling tower and its type in this session we will discuss about first contain or today session and the topic included so in this session we will discuss about the contain the first one cooling tower and its function different parts of the cooling tower factor affecting cooling tower cooling tower materials types of cooling tower losses in cooling tower and application of cooling tower so today first we will discuss what is meaning by the cooling tower first of all discuss the cooling tower it is a very important part of many chemical plants primary task of the cooling tower is to reject the heat to the atmosphere they represents relatively inexpensive and dependable means of removing low grade heat from cooling tower the make of water source is used to replenish water lost to evaporation hot water from heat exchanger is sent to the cooling tower the water exits the cooling tower and is sent back to the exchanger or to other units for the further cooling that means the main function of this cooling tower you have to use your here to uh, reject the heat to the atmosphere reject the heat to the atmosphere through the cooling water First, first of all, discuss about the first slide of this uh, practical hour, applied thermodynamics practical, the cooling tower and its function. The cooling tower is a heat rejection device. It is nothing but the heat rejection device that rejects waste heat to the atmosphere through cooling of water through cooling of wa water steam to a lower temperature. That means the cooling towers may either use evaporation of water. to remove the process heat and cool the working fluid to near the wet bulb air temperature or in case of closed circuit dry cooling towers rely solely on air to cool the working fluid to near the dry bulb air temperature that means the main thing is that the cooling tower is nothing but the in which what happens the evaporation water takes place that the main function to reduce the temperature of circulating hot water to reuse this water again in the boiler and this hot water is coming from the condenser that means this part cooling tower is nothing but the main important part of thermal power plant the most used in the thermal power plant and the cooling tower has a has a size different type of size are there depend upon the power generation it require the cooling tower this is the given the some construction parameter of the cooling tower cooling tower varies in size from small small group top units to very large hyperboloid structure that can be made to 200 meter 600 660 feet tall and 100 meter 350 in diameter we discuss about the cooling tower um, dimensions and the in this case what happening in this case the all the large towers are very prominently large large towers are very prominent the the vast majority of the cooling tower are much smaller including many units installed on the near building to discharge the heat from the air conditioner this is the discuss about the cooling tower the function of the thing but the heat re rejection device heat rejection takes place in this device the cooling tower is the main parameter in which the heat rejection takes place the next slide will discuss about different components of cooling tower So what are the main important component? Because we discuss uh, vapor power cycle, the different types of plant, plant components are there. Turbine is there, condenser is there, pump is there, boiler is there. But anyway, the cooling tower is another section, another component, uh, which is the important part of thermal power plant. What is the important part of cooling tower? So first of all, these are the seven parts. One is the illuminator, spray nozzle and heater, PVC tiling, mesh, float wall, bleed wall. body so this is the, this is the diagram from this diagram we have to discuss the different parts of there this is the nozzle is there spout is there illuminator is there the mesh is there the fan is there motor is there the bleed wall is there sump is there outlet drain inlet flow make up water all the components are uh, showing in this diagram so first discuss illuminator what is the meaning of illuminator it is not allowed to pass the water Illuminator is placed at the top of the tower from which only hot air can pass. That means this is the illuminator. Through this area, only hot gas to be entered. This is the only passage for hot air gas. 
do not allow the water from this passage the second the spray nozzle and header they are used to increase the rate of your operation these parts are used to increase the rate of your operation by increasing the surface area of water this is the spray nozzle this is the spray nozzle is there what is happening in this case in this case evaporation of water increases increasing the surface area of water the third pvc falling pvc falling pvc filling it reduces the falling speed of the hot water that is the reduces the speed of hot water this is the region in this section this section to reduce the so, speed of the hot water then this is the next parameter mesh the mesh is the point the mesh when the fan is on this is the fan when the fan is on it uses the atmospheric air which contains some unwanted dust particle the mesh is used to stop these particles and do not allow enter dust into the cooling tower that means this mesh has a, a device in which there in which what happened the unwanted moist unwanted uh, moisture unwanted particles do not allow the unwanted dust particles do not allow in this region only the filtered water only the filtered air is entered into this that the air taken from the atmosphere the air is entered into atmosphere that air should not contain the any dust particles that that means the mesh is a function to reduce to to avoid the uh, unwanted dust particles the next float float wall the float wall is used to maintain the level of water with the maintain the level of water in this region to maintain the level of water then bleed wall it is used to control the concentration of mineral and salt this is the float wall this is the bleed wall in which water happens to have to control the concentration of minerals and salt chemical the last part is the body the whole complete is nothing as the body a body it touching with the outer surface of cooling tower is often made up of fr frp fiber reinforced plastic which protect the internal parts of cooling tower that means the body is the is the portion in which internal part to be protected this is the explanation regarding the diagram this is the main components of the cooling tower we are discuss then this is about the components of cooling tower again the similar to that one the one or two components are added the components of cooling tower the basic components of evaporative tower are frame and casing feel cold water basin nozzle and fans frame and casing the most towers have structural frames that support the exterior enclosure like casting motor fans and other components with some smaller de smaller design such as glass fiber unit casing may be essential to be the spring these are this is about the evaporative evaporative tower basic components this is the feel feel nothing but the most tower employ the feel made of plastic or wood to facilitate to increase the heat transfer by maximize the water and air contact it provides some heat the same heat transfer in smaller wall that is yeah, the main function of this one to increase the heat transfer cold water basin the cold water basin is located near the bottom of the tower it receives the cold water that flows through the tower feel and feel and the basin usually has a sump or low point for the cold water discharge connection in many towers design the cold water basin is beneath the entire field again this is the main thing that means you have to receive the cold water the cold water basin the la next is the nozzle nozzle this provide the water spread to the wet field wet the field uniform water distribution at the top of the field essential to achieve proper wetting of the entire field surface nozzle fixed in place and have either round or square spray patterns or can be part of the rotating assembly as found in some circular cross section towers the nozzles only that means you have to provide the water spray the main parameter then discuss about the fan both axial propeller type or centrifugal fans are used in tower because this is the fan the in which which type of fan to be used therefore you have to for two types of fans are used one is the propeller type a second is the uh, centrifugal type propeller fans are used in induced duct tower and both propeller and centrifugal fans are, are found in force draft towers the depending upon the share size the propeller can, can can be either be fixed or variable pitch that means this fans only used to locate 
and you have to uh, this can be used different upon depend upon the situation. The it may be use a centrifugal fan, either centrifugal fan or propeller type, depending upon the situation of the cooling tower, cooling uh, reaction of it. Then discuss about factor affecting the cooling tower. What are the factors affecting cooling tower? There are some important factors which are essential for cooling tower to cool the water. The main function is that to cool the water. Therefore, the size and height of the cooling water, temperature of air, atmospheric air, humidity of air, arrangement of plate in the cooling tower, velocity of air entry of the cooling tower, accessibility of air to all parts of the cooling tower. These are the parameters. That is the main parameters that discuss about the size and height of cooling tower. That is the external parameter of cooling tower and the properties of air is very important. Then discuss about the cooling tower materials. Which type of material used in the cooling tower? Cooling tower is material. It's consi is a consist mostly consist of the wood constructed by the wood. Often the materials are used to enhance the corrosion resistance, reduce maintenance, promote reliability and long service life. That means you have to use the material in which the corrosion resistance should to increase the corrosion resistance to enhance to reduce the maintenance and long service life to provide the long service life then galvanized galvanized steel various grades of stainless steel glass fiber concrete are widely used in the tower construction as well as aluminum and various types of plastics for some components that means stainless steel and galvanized steel concrete glass fiber are the main important materials used for the cooling tower materials then many towers casting and basins are constructed of glass fiber galvanizing steel where corrosion atmosphere is a problem the stainless steel sometimes the galvanized tower has stainless steel basin that the stainless steel is more important because such type of many if you are using the different uh, different types of uh, towers material uh, uh, by uh, in uh, to reduce the corros corrosion the stainless steel is best then glass fiber is also widely used for cooling tower casting Glass fiber is also useful for cooling tower. It is a casting bed basin, giving long life protection from the harmful effects of many chemicals. Plastics are widely used to fill, and including PVC, polyethylene, and other polymers. Then discuss about the next slide: types of cooling tower. Cooling tower types. There are different types of cooling towers. The discuss about first one: the cooling tower. Has divided into two many parts: the natural draft cooling tower, there is a mechanical cooling tower. Mechanical cooling tower divided into the force draft cooling tower and induced draft cooling tower. The first one discuss about the natural draft cooling tower. Uh, discuss about the advantages. The advantages of the natural draft cooling tower: maintenance cost low, no fan are needed. It creates its own draft, assuming efficient operation, even when there is no wind. Then disadvantages: high capital cost. Performance varies with the seasonal changes. Then discuss about the advantages of the force drop. Advantages: more efficient. Pro problem of blade erosion are available. Fan is located at the ground, so more safe. Vibration and noise are less as mechanical equipments are set on a solid foundation. Then discuss about the disadvantages of force drop cooling tower. Fan size limited to four meter. Possibility of ice formation on fan fan blades in cold weather. Possibility of recirculation of hot humid exhaust air coming from the top of the tower. Then discuss about the induced draft cooling tower advantages. Large fan size can be used. Lower cost due to reduced pump capacity. Next, recirculation of hot humid air is not a major problem. The next. Coldest water comes in contact with the diest air, and the water, warm water, warmest water comes in contact with the moisture. Then the last to discuss about the disadvantages of the induced draft cooling tower. Maintenance cost is high, fan bearing need to be cooled. Then higher power motor is required to drive the fan compared to the force draft, and the last not economic. Not economical up to capacity of 15,000 liter of water per minute.
that we are discussing about some important uh, advantages and disadvantages of the uh, cooling tower then discuss about the types of cooling tower in which what happens what is the the first uh, is the type is the natural draft cooling tower this is the diagram in this diagram what happens the hot water inlet this is the nozzle is the hot water outlet this is the catch basin the backup water from source what happens in this case in this type fan is not used for circulating air in which what happens there is no circulation of air it takes place that fan is not necessary by introducing the heated air in the chimney it will create the pressure difference between the heated air and surrounding air what happens in this case what happens the difference created it created a difference pressure difference between the heated air and surrounding air because of this pressure difference air enter into the cooling tower it requires the large hyperbolic tower so capital cost is high but operating operating cost is low because of the absence of electrical fan that means there is in this case one uh, one more thing the large hyperbolic tower is hyperbolic tower hyperbolic tower is used that means in this case the due to the pressure difference it is pressure difference the air entered to cooling tower and there is a fan on the day this is the types of cooling tower this is about the natural draft cooling tower this is one the next topic type is the mechanical or forced draft cooling tower so what is happening in this case again go to this diagram and from this diagram we have all the parts are there the hot humid air tower outlet throat tower through tower shield tower inlet tower support and this is the drip eliminator water spray heat cold dry air entering in this one and uh, water basin and the hot water from condenser are taken from this side and there is a from this side then discuss about the mechanical and force or force draft cooling tower so in this case fan is used to circulate the air this is the main thing because the previous tower it it, it, it is not necessary to use the fan but in case of mechanical or force draft cooling tower it requires the fan the fan is used to circulate the air when power plant runs on peak load it requires a very high rate of cooling water to rotate fan it is use the motor with speed around 1000 rpm because suppose consider the power plant runs at heavy load that heavy load requires the heavy cooling effect therefore it requires the very high rate of cooling the working principle is same as natural draft cooling tower only difference is that fan is mounted on the cooling tower if the fan mounted on the top of the tower is called the in this draft cooling tower what happens in this case only difference that the fan is mounted on the cooling tower the fan is mounted on the top of the tower is called induced draft because the fan is mounted on the top of the therefore it is known as the induced draft cooling tower which is most popular for very large capacity installation that is useful for very large capacity it requires the large quantity of fan so the force draft cooling what tower contains horizontal shaft for the fan it place at the bottom of the tower induced draft in cooling contains the vertical shaft displaced at the top of the cooling tower that means it in this tower it requires the high amount of cooling water is needed therefore it requires the high rate of cooling water therefore we use this mostly use this a uh, mechanical for or force draft cooling tower is mostly in the thermal power plant then discuss about the what are the losses generated in the cooling tower the loss of water in the cooling tower is due to the three different reasons and has to made during operation the makeup percentage in modern tower is around 1% then there are the different three losses are mainly three losses the evaporation loss drip loss block down losses so what is discussed in the first one a part of water evaporate this is what creates cooling effect this depends on the ambient temperature relative humidity or ambient wet bulb temperature the evaporation loss is mainly depend upon the ambient temperature there is the ambient temperature and ambient wet bulb temperature and relative humidity second drop second loss is there drip loss the water particles carried away through the flowing air water particles carried away through the flowing air drip eliminator and details design have reduced largely in the modern tower this is called the range of 0.2% of the water flowing then this loss takes place due to the when the water carrying the air and that air the design eliminator design has reduced the loss the most used in the modern cooling tower then last one the block blow down losses 
the pleural acid evaporator water leaves behind the salt which over time accumulates increasing the tedious level this required to be locked down occasionally this constitutes a loss which has to be made up that means suppose consider evaporator water leaves the uh, salt that means we have already discussed about this is the diagram this diagram in which what happened this is the diagram of the first we discussed about this one is the diagram in this grid wall and this grid wall means nothing but the it is used for control the concentration of spindle of salt this wall and this is the part in which block down uh, block down uh, losses to be taken place and this can be re removed and that means it can be it can be requires block down occasionally that means such type may be the power plant may be uh, shut down due to this problem is a very major problem with this block down losses the Biocides and chemical controls are required to eliminate bacterial growth and eliminate scales that are useful at the same time the performance reduction factor. That means it can be performance reduction. So such a type losses should be eliminated so that efficiency of the efficiency of the cycle to be improved. Then last to discuss about the application of cooling tower. So what are the application? That means they are mostly used in the schools, large office buildings, hospitals. Cooling towers are much larger than traditional HVAC system and are used to remove the heat from the cooling tower, water system, in petroleum refineries, plants, natural gas, processing plant, petrochemical plants, and the other industrial processes and facilities. That means mostly use the different cooling tower, mostly use the different fields, that is the school. Uh, office section, hospitals, then using the refiner, chemical refineries mostly, and uh, this is the this is the discussion today. We discuss about the cooling tower discussion. What are the types? What are the functions? Different parts, components, heterophytic cooling tower, and the losses generated application of cooling tower. And this is the end of the today's session.